in this example, we're going to have my daughter. I wrote this a long time ago. She's no longer 15 kilograms. 15.0 kilograms. Uh, and the mass of the merry-go-round, which is a wheel, is approximately 235 kilograms. The initial angular velocity is 2.0 radians per second. And we're looking for the angular velocity final of the merry-go-round if my daughter wa uh, walks, crawls, whatever, from the outside all the way to the inside. So she's going to start out out here. Initially, she's going to be right here. And finally, she's going to walk until she gets, so she's right in the middle of the merry-go-round. Now, we're going to approximate the merry-go-round as a um, solid disk. It's close, it's not perfect, but it's a good approximation. First thing to realize is that there are no, there's no net external torque acting on it. She may be applying a force, but there would be an equal opposite force on her, and hence those two torques would be equal and opposite as well. So what we start out with is the initial angular momentum equals the sum of the final angular momentum. So we have uh, my daughter and the merry-go-round. Now, we're going to treat my daughter as a point particle and the merry-go-round as an object with shape. She is much smaller than the merry-go-round. It's not perfect. She's not quite a point particle, but it's a good approximation. So what we have is the R cross, or we'll do this, R mv sine theta. All of this initial for my daughter. So this is the R of my daughter initial, the mass of my daughter, the velocity of my daughter initial, and the angle initial, plus the object with shape, which is the, uh, disc, the solid disk itself, which is going to be the moment of inertia of the disk times the angular velocity initial of the disk. Now, when she gets to the very middle of the merry-go-round, she is a point particle. So what is her distance from the axis of rotation? So does she have angular momentum when she is in the middle of the disk? No. No. Is that actually true? It's not quite true because she's not quite a point particle, but, but compared to the size of the disk, it's a good approximation. So we're not going to have a value for her at the end here, but we are going to have the angular momentum of the uh, merry-go-round itself. Working from left to right, we know that her initial position, she starts out the full radius, so I'll pull up, put a capital R, the full radius from the axis of rotation, which is right in the middle here. We then have the mass of my daughter. Now, this is, the velocity of my daughter initial is going to be her initial tangential velocity. And what is the angle between her initial, uh, between her tangential velocity and the radius? Uh, Tim? Uh, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So we have the sine of 90. We have the moment of inertia of the solid disk, which we know is 1 half mr squared. So this is 1 half times the mass of the wheel times the radius of the wheel squared times the angular velocity initial. And again, 1 half mass of the wheel radius squared times the angular velocity final. Radius to the party. Thank you. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, I this off. I moved it, but I forgot to turn it. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, the mass of my daughter, tangential velocity, the mass of the wheel, radius, angular velocity divided by two. A plus equals mass of the wheel of radius angular velocity final divided by two. Thoughts? Yeah, Jeff. Uh, we have to solve the velocity tangential for omega. We could take the tangential velocity. We know the tangent the equation for the tangential velocity, however. 
that's going to be equal to r times omega, right? So this is this is on the initial side. So this tangential velocity will be equal to because it's the tangential velocity initial will be equal to r times omega initial. Well, let's multiply by 2, it's easier. It was so much fun the first time we get to do it again. Everyone brought radius again to the party. Wow, look at it. <laughs> so we have 2 times the mass of my daughter, initial angular velocity plus the mass of the wheel, angular velocity mass of the wheel, angular velocity final. Therefore, the angular velocity final equals, let's see, omega initial times 2 times the mass of my daughter plus the mass of the wheel divided by the mass of the wheel. Uh, initial angular velocity was 2. 2 mass of my daughter is 15 plus the mass of the wheel is 235. Uh, divided by the mass of the wheel, 235. So with sig figs, we'll go with 2.3 radians per second. An interesting thing to note about our answer. Does the radius of the merry-go-round matter? No. Notice it didn't matter at all. It ends up canceling out completely. As long as she goes from the outside, actually it doesn't matter because Regardless of whether she goes from here to the middle, her, answer, her uh, final point would be in terms of the radius anyway. So no matter where she moves, that radius will always end up canceling out. So just an interesting point that it only matters the fraction of how far she moves from the outside to the inside. It doesn't matter the actual distance.